Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks and we're ready again for our Course of Miracles lesson from the uh, workbook for students from the original edition. We're ready for lesson 146, May the 26th of 22. My mind holds only what I think with God. Our minds hold only what we think with God. Everything else it doesn't hold is not real. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Well, we're trying to figure out what's real and, and know that our mind only holds what we think with God. My mind holds only what I think with God. And then the two associated uh, reviews for today, lesson 131 and 132. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. Are you asking? Are you really sincerely asking of God to reach the truth? Well, be assured you cannot fail. <laughs> and I loose the world from all I thought it was. Have we done that? Have we loosed the world from all that we thought it was so that we can have an open mind, a clean slate to let the voice of God speak to us? All right, so today, many times today, remind yourself, my mind holds only what I think with God. Try to do it on an hourly basis when the hour chimes or at some point during the hour, try to bring your attention to the idea my mind holds only what I think with God and hold that thought for a moment. And then in that space, remind yourself, no one can fail who asks to reach the truth. And I loose the world from all I thought it was. We've got a few more reviews. We got about five more reviews on this, this section and uh, 10 more lessons uh, that we'll be reviewing to each day five times. So, my mind holds only what I think with God. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. I loose the world from all I thought it was. All right. Now let's uh, go back and take a look in our text reading. And we are ready for, in chapter 19, uh Beyond the Body, The Unreality of Sin, Section 9. Section 9. And um, let me just uh, briefly tell you about another uh, type of spinach. Uh, I'd like to tell you about uh, the Norfolk. The Norfolk spinach. Uh, it's a Brassica juncia. Uh, Seed Savers Exchange acquired this variety from Abundant Life Seed Foundation. That's some, something to keep in mind, that Abundant Life Seed Foundation. In the 1980s, the foundation obtained its seed stock in the 1970s from growers and Seed Saver Exchange member Peter Ruppel, believed to be the same variety sold by Peter Henderson as early as 1878. It grows semi-upright plants that are 10 inches tall and 2 inches wide and bear dark green savoy leaves that are heart-shaped with long petioles. The variety resists bolting when sown in the spring but may grow larger when planted in the fall. Round seed. Uh, anyway, that's your Norfolk uh, heirloom spinach so uh, okay let's go take a look now the unreality of sin the attraction of guilt is found in sin not error the attraction of guilt is found in sin not in error okay he's going to develop this idea more uh, that we talked about yesterday that um, sin versus error you know, we want to see that we've made, we, we want to understand that, yes, we do make mistakes. We do have some errors, but errors can be corrected. 
Sin has the idea that it's permanent and that it can't be corrected and that it's associated with uh, punishment and guilt, all of which are things the Holy Spirit does not see because they are not real. So keep that in mind as we read this. Let's see if I've got enough light where I can read without my glasses. If I need to put them on, I will, but i got a pair that are scratched pretty good, and I'm trying not to use these uh, magical formulas. <laughs> the attraction of guilt is found in sin, not error. Sin will be repeated because of this attraction. Fear can become so acute that the, that the sin is denied the acting out but while the guilt remains attractive, the mind will suffer and not let go of the idea of sin. For guilt still calls to it, and the mind hears it and yearns for it, making itself a willing captive to its sick appeal. Sin is an idea of evil that cannot be corrected and will be forever desirable. As an essential part of what the ego thinks you are, you will always want it. And only an avenger with a mind unlike your own could stamp it out through fear. The ego does not think it possible that love, not fear, is really called upon by sin and always answers. Let's read that again. This is the first paragraph, first sentence, paragraph 26. The ego does not think it possible that love, not fear, is really called upon by sin and always answers. For the ego brings sin to fear, demanding punishment. Yet punishment is but another form of guilt's protection. For what is deserving punishment must have been really done. Punishment is always the great preserver of sin. Punishment is always the great preserver of sin. Punishment is always the great preserver of sin, treating it with respect and honoring its enormity. What must be punished must be true, and what is true must be eternal and will be repeated endlessly. For what you think is real you want and will not let it go. An error, on the other hand, is not attractive. What you see clearly as a mistake, you want corrected. <laughs> and that's what we want. We want to see our, our, our mistakes corrected. And we want to recognize that our minds hold only what we think with God. And there, ain't, there is no guilt in God. And there is no guilt in you. Or in your brothers and sisters. We want to see them all that way. Paragraph 27. So what you see clearly is a mistake you want corrected. 27. Sometimes a sin can be repeated over and over with obviously distressing results, but without the loss of its appeal. And suddenly you change its status from a sin to a mistake. Now you will not repeat it. You will merely stop and let it go unless the guilt remains. For then you will but change the form of sin, granting that it was an error, but keeping it uncorrectable. This is not really a change in your perception, for it is sin that calls for punishment, not error. The Holy Spirit cannot punish sin. Mistakes he recognizes and would correct them all as God entrusted him to do. But sin he knows not nor can he recognize mistakes which cannot be corrected. For a mistake which cannot be corrected is meaningless to him. Let's look at that again. The Holy Spirit cannot punish sin. Well, you should be rest and assured in that. Mistakes he recognizes and would correct them all, as God entrusted him to do. But sin he knows not nor can he recognize mistakes which cannot be corrected. For a mistake which cannot be corrected is meaningless to the Holy Spirit. 28. Mistakes are for correction, and they call for nothing else. 
What calls for punishment must call for nothing. Every mistake must be a call for love. What then is sin? Every mistake must be a call for love. What then is sin? What could it be but a mistake you would keep hidden? A call for help that you would keep unheard and thus unanswered. In time, the Holy Spirit clearly sees the Son of God can make mistakes. In time, the Holy Spirit clearly sees the Son of God can make mistakes. On this you share his vision, yet you do not share his recognition of the difference between time and eternity. And when correction is completed, time is eternity. <laughs> okay, we want to start seeing things the way the Holy Spirit sees it, or at least be willing to be shown the way the Holy Spirit sees uh, in time, the Holy Spirit clearly sees the Son of God can make mistakes. On this you share his vision, yet you do not share his recognition of the difference between time and eternity. And when correction is completed, time is eternity. Okay, he's going to try to give us a little illustration of the way, as I understand it, the Holy Spirit sees time and wants us to kind of see it. Time is like a downward spiral, which seems to travel down from a long, unbroken line along another plane, but which in no way breaks the line or interferes with its smooth continuousness. Along the spiral, it seems as if the line must have been broken. Yet, at the line, its wholeness is apparent. Along the spiral, it seems as if the line must have been broken. Yet, at the line, its wholeness is apparent. Everything seen from the spiral is misperceived. But as you approach the line, you realize that it was not affected by the drop into another plane at all. Yet from the plane, the line seems discontinuous. And this is but an error in perception which can be easily corrected in the mind, although the body's eyes will see no change. The eyes see many things the mind corrects, and you respond not to the eye's illusions, but to the mind's corrections. Paragraph 30. You see the line as broken, and as you shift to different aspects of the spiral, the line looks differently or different. Yet in your mind is one who knows it is unbroken and forever changeless. This one can teach you how to look on time differently and see beyond it, but not while you believe in sin. Okay, we have to let go of the idea that sin is real in order to understand the way the Holy Spirit sees eternity and time. This one, the Holy Spirit, can teach you how to look on time differently and see beyond it but not while you believe in sin. In error, yes, for this can be corrected by the mind. But sin is the belief that your perception is unchangeable and that the mind must accept as true what it is told through it. Let's read that again. But sin is the belief that your perception is unchangeable and that the mind must accept as true what is told through it. If it does not obey, the mind is judged insane. The only power which could change perception is thus kept impotent. The only power which could change perception is thus kept impotent, 
held to the body by the fear of changed perception, which its teacher, who is one with it, would bring. Let's read that last little bit again. Sin is the belief that your perception is unchangeable and that the mind must accept as true what it is told through it. If it does not obey, the mind is judged insane. The only power which could change perception is thus kept impotent, held to the body by the fear of changed perception, which its teacher, which is one with it, would bring. Paragraph 31. When you are tempted to believe that sin is real, okay, we want to learn to, to look on everything knowing that only love is real. But, here's what he says, but when you are tempted to believe that sin is real, remember this. If sin is real, both God and you are not. <laughs> I just love it the way Jesus puts things so clearly. If sin is real, both God and you are not. <laughs> if creation is extension, the Creator must have extended Himself, and it is impossible that what is part of Him is totally unlike the rest. If sin is real, God must be at war with Himself. He must be split and torn between good and evil, partly sane and partly insane, for he must have created what wills to destroy him and has the power to do so. Is it not easier to believe that you have been mistaken than to believe in this? <laughs> While you believe that your reality or your brother's is bounded by a body, you will believe in sin. While you believe that your reality or your brother's is bounded by a body, you will believe in sin. While you believe that bodies can unite, you will find guilt attractive and believe that sin is precious. For the belief that bodies limit mind leads to a perception of the world in which the proof of separation seems to be everywhere. And God and his creation seem to be split apart and overthrown. For sin would prove what God created holy could not prevail against it nor remain itself before the power of sin. Sin is perceived as mightier than God, before which God himself must bow and offer his creation to its conqueror. Is this humility or madness? <laughs> if sin were real, it would forever be beyond the hope of healing, for there would be a power beyond God's, capable of making another will which could attack his will and overcome it and give his son a will apart from his and stronger. And each part of God's fragmented creation would have a different will opposed to his and an eternal opposition to him and to each other. Your holy relationship has as its purpose now, the goal of proving this is impossible, because we're going to start seeing each other as mind and, and realize that the mind doesn't attack and that it's in harmony and that it's an extension of God. Therefore, your brother is, and your sister is an extension of God and you're intent on seeing only that reality. Okay, so let's look at this again. If sin were real, it would forever be on be be beyond the hope of healing. For there would be a power beyond God's capable of making another will which could attack his will and overcome it and give his son a will apart from his and stronger. 
and each part of God's fragmented creation would have a different will, opposed to his, and in eternal opposition to him and to each other. Your holy relationship has as its purpose now the goal of proving this is impossible. Heaven has smiled upon it, and the belief in sin has been uprooted in its smile of love. You see it still because you do not realize that its foundation has gone. Its source has been removed, and so it can be cherished but a little while before it vanishes. Only the habit of looking for it still remains. <laughs> and we're going to break that habit by our lessons. That's why it's so important that we do our lessons. And as I am encouraged you several many times actually write your lesson on a card so that you can keep it close or and I mean you don't have to write it on a card I'm not saying that that's a requirement by any means it helps me though and I'm just trying to let you know it might help you too for today and that's we'll stop our reading there but let's go back and look at our lesson once again my mind holds only what I think with God my mind holds only what I think with God. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. Reminds me of that Bible verse where Jesus says, Ask and it shall and ask and you shall find. Uh, seek. Seek ask and it will be shown to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be op opened. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. And I loose the world from all I thought it was. We've got to loose the world from what we thought it was, so we've got uh, room to uh, have the truth be shown to us again. We need that clear slate. We need that open mind. So thank you for joining me out here in my garden on this rainy day under the umbrella. My mind holds only what I think with God. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. I loose the world from all I thought it was.